So before getting into Python and algorithmic problem solving, let's talk a bit about computers and how they represent information because that'll help us understand why we have computer languages in the first place. So we, of course, are humans and humans are, at times at least, brilliant. But when it comes to computation, they're very slow and they could be very sloppy. Now let's contrast that with a computer, or computers in general, they're blindingly fast when it comes to computation. They're incredibly accurate. They essentially never make mistakes. It's programmers that make mistakes, not the computers. But they're rather dumb machines, or very simple machines might be a nicer word. And when it comes to computers, what do they understand? Well, they only understand if they could be said to understand anything. Two numbers we could think of as zero and one, and it represents these numbers with charge. There's a little cloud of positive charge by this one, and a little cloud of negative charge by the zeros, and the computer controls the movement of charges with switches known as transistors. Now, this single digit that the computer can store or represent or that it understands is called a bit. And bit comes from the first letter of binary and the last two letters of digit. So binary digit, when we're counting in the base two counting system, we only have the digits zero and one. And we won't get into binary or base two counting system, but we do want to talk about the use of bits and the representation of information. OK, so everything in the computer is in terms of ones and zeros. And what can we do with these ones and zeros? And let's start with a single bit. One bit, what can we do with that? Well, there they are, zero and one are the two values that bit can take on. So it looks like we can count to one, and that doesn't seem very useful. But in fact, how about if we ask a yes, no question, we can store the answer to that question using a single bit. We might say the zero corresponds to no, and the one corresponds to yes. Or we could ask a true-false question, and again, store the response with a single bit. So the important thing to keep in mind here is that bits don't necessarily correspond to numbers. They can represent information in the more general sense. So good to go? Now with one bit, we could represent the response to any yes, no question, any true, false question. It's pretty remarkable what we could do with just one bit. But now let's add another bit. Let's deal with two bits and see what we can represent. So with one bit, we had values of 0 and 1. With this additional bit, we can tack that on. It could take on the value of 0. So there we have two unique values. There's the 0 and 1 of 1 bit again. But with that additional bit, we can make that 1, tack that on. So when we consider the combination of two bits, we have four unique values. And underneath now, we just placed a count, 0, 1, 2, 3, the decimal count here. Now keep in mind, when we're writing these bits, that's 1, 0. That's not 10. This is 1, 1. That's not 11. Now, one thing we could do with these is, let's say we're creating a poker game and we want to keep track of the suits of the cards. So we might say that this 0, 0 corresponds to the suit of diamonds, and 0, 1 corresponds to spades, and 1, 0 corresponds to hearts, and we have clubs corresponding to 1, 1. It's up to us what these combination of bits represent. OK, we might be interested in doing studies of genetics. And genetics, we have that double helix that consists of four different nucleotides. There's A, C, G, and T. There's adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. thymine. 
And if we want to study an entire gene that consists of many of these nucleotides, we just need two bits to represent each one. Or another thing that there are four of, how about if we're looking at a compass and the cardinal directions on a compass, there's north, there's east, and there's south, and there's west. Again, these bits aren't necessarily numbers. They can represent information. And this just demonstrates a few of the countless possibilities we have for mapping information to these bits. Now let's move on to three bits. So let's think of these three bits that each can take on the value of 0, 1, but collected together as three things. So when we had two bits, we saw that there were four unique combinations. With this third bit, and we'll just tack this on at the beginning so it's 0 there. But let's take those four combinations of two bits again. This additional bit that we have, this third bit, let's make it a 1 tacked on there. So if we count these, we have eight unique combinations here numbered 0 through 7. So what can we do with that? Well, we can go back to the compass that we had before with directions. And with four unique values, we could represent the cardinal directions of north, east, south, and west. But now by tacking on one additional bit, we picked up four more values that we can represent. And so now we can represent the intercardinal directions of northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. So we could use these eight values to represent these directions. But anything that has eight unique values, we could map to these bits. It's up to us. So in the next video, we'll talk about generalizing this to any number of bits, and then also talk about how we might represent pictures and sounds using simply bits.